Oh boy. So y'all cancel Aunt Jemima, really? Aunt Jemima. Okay. 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 The Zero Hour. So in our latest installment of Everything is Awful, uh, I just found out they cancel Aunt Jemima. So, uh, full disclosure, I found out yesterday, yesterday morning, I walked into work and somebody had told me about Aunt Jemima and I had already, as uh, upon walking into work, I had already found out about two other things that had been canceled. Two other forms of outrage and Aunt Jemima was the third outrage of the day and it wasn't even 10 o'clock in the morning yet. <clears throat> so that's that's how my that's how my Thursday started. Uh, today's Friday. I'll be recording my podcast a little later in the day. But I want to get to this Aunt Jemima thing because I want to be able to have time to process and deliver my thoughts before they're influenced by someone else or before somebody has a chance to tell me what to think and how to feel about it. And this is the this is the core of the problem. I am at my wits end. I am super, I'm just done. And I'm tired. I am tired. And I, I'm sorry if this sounds racist, but this is the only characterization for it. I am tired of these white liberals telling me what to be offended about. So let's talk about Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima, to me, looks like my mom and some other older black women that I knew growing up. She looks like a normal woman, or at least back in the 80s when I was growing up, Aunt Jemima looked like a normal woman. That's what black women look like. They wore the hair scarf. Some women were overweight, had the moo-moos. I knew a lot of old women that looked like that. That was an actual image, an actual representation of some people that I knew. It wasn't derogatory. It wasn't a pejorative. It wasn't embarrassing. That was just how they dressed. That was how they looked. Now, I'm gathering information and I'm finding out that the Aunt Jemima that I am familiar with is a later iteration of the character. Um, I believe her name was Nancy Green. Maybe that was the first one. So I can't remember what the, what the second Aunt Jemima's character, uh, what the actress was. But the second actress made so much money playing the part that she bought a house with like 20 rooms in it. And, and that's... That's amazing. Uh, this is this is what we should be looking at when we think of Aunt Jemima. We should be looking at the past, and we should be looking at progress. So the character, the mascot, whatever you want to call it, it started as this racist thing. Yeah, back in the 1800s, it started as a, a racist imagery, and then it evolved into what I remember is the image that I'm familiar with and fond with, fond of, because it reminds me of home. It reminds me of my past. It reminds me of when days were simpler, being a kid, you know, playing out in the streets with other kids, not having to worry about child molesters and kidnappers and gunmen and all of the things that we worry about now, not, not having the internet to, to kind of screw up our lives. I remember my mom sending me down to some other neighbor's house to get something or to ask her a question with a note. And she answered the door, dressed like Aunt Jemima on a hot summer day. I remember that. I remember people, and, and that's a part of my childhood. That's a fond memory that I hold to. So now I got these coastal elites and these business executives telling me how to be, how to feel, how to think what's right, what's wrong about my memories of my own subjective childhood. And I don't appreciate it. I'm tired of it. I don't need you to tell me what to be offended about. I don't need you to tell me how to feel. Maybe you should mind your own business and let me feel how I want to feel. It's not black people that were pushing for the canceling of Aunt Jemima. It's just some corporate executives that suddenly after a hundred freaking years decided Hey, maybe we shouldn't be racist. Maybe this is bad imagery. Here's the deal. They changed that imagery. They changed it. It evolved. It turned into something normative. Now, Aunt Jemima wasn't a powerful, 
woman in a business suit, you know, who was the CEO of Aunt Jemima Pancakes Incorporated or anything like that. She was just a normal woman. She was the homie, down south, you know, lovable woman that, y'all yeah, want something to eat? You know, like that's that was what came to mind. Now, if that's offensive to you, screw you. That's warm, that's heartwarming to me. That reminds me of home. I try to be like that to people when they come to my house. Y'all want something to eat? I was just getting ready to make food. I was just getting ready to make dinner. You wanna join us? You guys like pancakes? What's wrong with that? So it's like a, it's like a sin in this new religious cult to be polite to people, to be uh, uh, hospitable. That's what Aunt Jemima always reminded me of was hospitality. I don't ever remember the, the, the company taking a survey or ever being asked about it or anything. It also reminds me of the past, of where we came from. Yeah, we got a horrible, ugly past, but you know what? There's also progress in our story. And it reminds me that no matter how dark times may seem, how bad things might seem right now, there's a possibility of that changing. With enough hard work and with enough can-do attitude, we can grow. Excuse me while I blow the horn at this guy who's going like 10 miles under the speed limit. I'm on my lunch break, sorry to be rude. Uh, anyways, that's, that's what's going on. It's a representative of the past, of normal people. Uh, here's another here's another thing about Aunt Jemima because this is this is pretty important it was the first example in American history in elementary school it was it was my first introduction to the First Amendment what freedom of speech actually looks like uh, and there was a story about a guy who was a racist white guy who had a Aunt Jemima like an animatronic Aunt Jemima slave Thing, flipping pancakes in his front yard and he had like all this racist stuff in his front yard he had an Aunt Jemima animatronic you know flipping pancakes with a tear going down her face and they asked what do we think of it and we were like that's horrible why can't we make him not do that and and, and the teacher explained to us that he, this is the first amendment you have freedom of speech and there are people in this country who have terrible opinions and a horrible outlook on life. But this man's right to exercise the First Amendment means that he can have this ugly, horrible Aunt Jemima animatronic statue in his front yard. And, okay, I gotta go past this guy. Hang on one second. Oh, there's a truck coming. So, what, Understanding the First Amendment in this lesson, it, the teacher was explaining that people have horrible opinions. They have ugly opinions. They have terrible opinions. And at the same time, we have the right to have those horrible and ugly and terrible opinions. And we have the right to express ourselves in ways that aren't violent towards other people. And this man's freedom to put this ugliness in his front yard was his First Amendment right that he was exercising because of the way that our nation was set up, that we can express ourselves freely, even if it offends other people. And if you want to put something ugly in your front yard that has racist overtones and, and it says things about that are bad about people, you have the right to do that. But that also means that when you have an opinion that's misunderstood or is ugly, that nobody has the right to take your opinion from you. No one has the right to take your voice from you because they disagree with you. And we've forgotten that in this country. We've forgotten that it's, we're, it's not, the point isn't to make people agree with you. That's the dictatorship. We don't have that in America. We're not dictators. We're not a country of dictators who want to force people to agree with you. We're a country of people who have freedom of speech and our freedoms clash. 
and you're gonna have to learn to live in a country with people who disagree with you and you're gonna have to be an adult and you're gonna have to learn to be mature enough to let people have their ugly ugly terrible opinions and you might have to learn turn the other way because it's not your it's not your right to be right all the time you don't get to force people to do things you have the peace of mind knowing that no one can take your voice away but you do not have the right to force other people to do things so the question becomes would you rather have peace of mind or would you rather force people to behave a certain way and that was taught to me in the third grade. And it served me well my entire life, knowing that people are gonna do ugly, terrible things, and they're gonna say ugly, terrible things. And I, I can protest. I can say, that's not right. And they can't stop me from protesting. Or if I believe in something and I'm trying to do something good in the world and somebody comes along and they wanna protest, like that man with the Aunt Jemima in his front yard, that was his protest. We have the right to counter protest, but we don't have the right to tear down his property. That was what I learned in the third grade, and I wish that we would teach more people to think in an American fashion. So I, I the image of Aunt Jemima evolved over time. When I, when, by the time I was a kid in the 80s, it was something that was normal, that I was fond of, and I, I was grateful to have some representation that seemed normal to me. It wasn't a rapper, it wasn't a superhero, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't a high-powered businesswoman. It was just a, a, a hospitable old woman who was, you know, who wanted to know if you, if you like pancakes. There was nothing wrong with that. And now something horrible is going on in this country and people want to take away those images, those positive black images. And I think maybe that's, that's a little more racist on a deeper level possibly because they're not, they're not concerned with how I think or feel as a black man, they're concerned about how they think and feel. And then they want to explain to me why I should feel slighted. And I think that's wrong. I don't like, like I was saying in the other example, you don't get to make decisions for me. If I want somebody to make decisions for me, I'll elect that person and then they can use the system that we set up to make those decisions for me. But you don't just get to decide what's best for me and what I should think and how I should feel. That's not right. So I guess the only thing left to do is to say rest in peace to Aunt Jemima. You know, we had a good run. We had a, an American figure for about a hundred years and it made, it, it, she, had a, she had a good finish. You know, just like the actress who played Aunt Jemima, who started her literal life as a slave. You know, she had a rough beginning, but it had a good finish. So I guess maybe that's what we have to remember. And I'll have the memories and this religion of the left can't take these memories away from me. And that's fine. Uh, also, I should note that um, you know, now that I'm an adult who makes a little more money than I did when I was a kid, uh, a younger man, I'll use that money to buy some actual maple syrup and not, you know, whatever Aunt Jemima was. I mean, it was all right. It had nostalgia attached to it. It's the only reason I would buy that syrup. But now that there's no reason to, to have cheap syrup, you know, now I'll just go buy the $11, $14, $20 a bottle actual maple syrup because it's, you know, it tastes better anyway. Because I'm sure not going to go buy Mrs. Butterworth. 